Good morning. We are leaving bright and early for Cappadocia. Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be all about my time in Cappadocia. After spending some time in Antalya, my boyfriend and I planned to go to Cappadocia for a few days. The only thing that we actually knew about Cappadocia was the famous hot air balloons. So we knew we wanted to go for that, but we actually discovered that there was a lot more to Cappadocia and the town of Garam than we originally thought. The flight from Antalya to Cappadocia was around like an hour and a half-ish. Um, and then we had to take a shuttle from the airport to the town of Garam. As soon as we got there, we were starving, so we went to get a quick bite. On a whim, we decided to try what ended up being one of my favorite foods that I tried in Turkey, which is Turkish ravioli. It's so good. It always comes in this like tomatoey, lemony, herby sauce. It's you have to try it. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh my god, what does that taste like? And then it was a little bit late in the day, but we still decided we would go for a bit of a hike. So we kind of started the trail to go into the Red Valley and then the Pink Valley, but we didn't want it to get dark while we were still out, so we did turn back. On the way back, we passed by this old church that had been like carved into the rock formations. So we decided to explore that. It was crazy. It was, we got to explore like little staircases and tunnels and oh, it was insane. So that was our first night in Cappadocia. On our second morning, we wanted to get up early to see the balloons, but I don't think we realized like just how early you have to get up to see those balloons. So we kind of woke up and realized that we had missed most of the excitement. But because we were up anyway, and I really wanted to show you guys what a big Turkish breakfast spread is all about, we decided to head up to Maria's breakfast. This morning we're gonna do a traditional Turkish breakfast. If you've ever seen a picture of a Turkish breakfast, you know it's a spread of a bunch of different things. So we're gonna eat one together and I'm gonna tell you what all the different components are. I love a Turkish breakfast. I was so excited to come to Turkey to have it every morning. I just love any kind of meal where you're like picking and mixing at different things. I think it's the best way to eat a meal and it's also so fun to share. Today we're at Maria's breakfast in Cappadocia. We looked at the reviews and we decided we had to come here. It also has an incredible view from the terrace. So we got here bright and early and we're just waiting for our breakfast now. I'm very excited. This is the craziest spread I've ever seen. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys, I've never seen a spread like this in my life. This is way more than we were expecting. I'm gonna tell you what I know. So the first thing is the cheeses, which are over here. Usually with your cheese platter, you're gonna get feta. And then there's always like a few other ones. So on this one, we have feta. Usually there's like this uh, unpasteurized hard sheep's milk cheese. And then there's like a soft version of that. And then a few times we've had these little like cheese string looking things. So it looks like we have four different cheeses on this platter. It looks like we have the feta, the hard sheep's milk cheese, and the soft sheep's milk cheese, and then one I don't know what it is. Oftentimes with the cheeses, you'll also get some like cold cuts of meats. Another really traditional part of the Turkish breakfast platter is your eggs. We've gotten it hard boiled, we've gotten two fried eggs, but the most traditional way to do it is what we have here, which is eggs and Turkish sausage. And then for bread, we've had baguette before, but the more traditional thing to get is pita, which is these like kind of flat square bread. And then <laughs> there's so much stuff. Every Turkish breakfast we've had so far it comes with tomatoes and cucumbers. That seems to be the standard. So it's really nice to get the freshness of the vegetables as you take bites of everything. The most fun part of the breakfast bread, in my opinion, is this platter of spreads and olives. You'll always get jams and um, honey, and then Turkey exports a lot of hazelnuts, so a lot of times you'll see Nutella as well. So that's all the sweet spreads, but then if you get a big Turkish breakfast spread, they'll also bring savory spreads as well. So like sometimes sesame or like a chutney of some kind, which I think we have on this as well. And then 
fresh butter always too. Over there we have french fries. They brought us watermelon, which we have gotten before. And then, okay, it can be really tempting to only get Turkish breakfast for breakfast while you're in Turkey, but I would also really recommend branching out and trying other things on the menu because that's how we discovered menemen, which has now become one of my favorite foods already. It's just tomatoes and eggs and spices in a pan, and it's so, so good. I'm so excited to start eating. Let's get into this. The first thing I'm gonna do is get some of this menemen on a pita. The pita is so good. Okay, I have a little bit of pita, the sheep's milk cheese, and cucumber. Mm. A little olive with it. Everything is so good. This is the string cheese that Ryan and I have seen. Usually it's like much smaller than this. Mmm. Okay, my camera battery died, so we moved to my phone. If you're in Cappadocia, I would highly recommend Maria's Breakfast. This, it was 300 lira per person, which for Canadian right now is around $15 per person, which is a bit more expensive than we've had in other places, but this is by far the most ex extensive Turkish breakfast we've had, so I would say it's definitely worth the price for the amount of food and also the views behind you. It's incredible. So after our breakfast, we spent some time inside because it gets so hot during the day in Garam in Cappadocia. And we started planning out what our hike would be that day. We wanted to do this trail called Love Valley and Pigeon Valley, but we had seen ex people sharing their experiences online saying that they had been like bit by dogs. And that was pretty recent. Like it was only like a month or something before we had gotten there. So we went and we spoke to the reception at our hotel and they were like, yeah, the dogs are like a really big issue. Um, it just like happens, They're, whatever, it's because the town won't do anything about these dogs that keep biting people. So I was like, I'm not gonna get bit by a dog, like I'm sorry, in what world am I going to go on a hike where it's a known risk that I might get bit by a wild dog? Like, absolutely not. We decided we would just do a second attempt at the Red Valley Pink Valley Trail. So after spending the day indoors for a little bit, we went and we got another bite to eat in order to be well fueled for a hike and then we were on our way. Okay. So this is our second attempt at hiking towards the Red Valley in Cappadocia. Really, really gorgeous and it's not that hard of a trail. I only say second attempt because we came here yesterday but we didn't leave ourselves enough time to do it before sundown. Hiking outfit, so we have my little Lululemon top, some Nike shorts, and then these are my hiking boots that I got for Austria. thought I'd break them in a little bit. The thing with hiking in Cappadocia is you either have to go really early in the morning or towards the later afternoon and risk it getting a little bit dark. We also made sure to bring a ton of water and lots of sunscreen and snacks. We're feeling pretty well prepared for this. It's honestly a great trail. There's not too many people on it. The only thing is that they're not marked very well. pretty beginner to intermediate level hike. It's a lot of flat and like pretty easy terrain, but I will say there are quite a few like steep bits. Um, and then I think at some point we have to use a ladder or like use rope to help you walk across some parts. So it's not super beginner, but as a beginner, I'm not feeling too bad about it. At like semi-regular intervals, there's little places to stop for tea and a little bathroom, which is very convenient. Okay, so that is the ladder. It brings us up to the cave. We came up here and we think it goes the same way. We might skip the ladder. So it looks a little sketchy. And honestly, I'm not mad at this, so up we go. We're about halfway through the hike and we arrived at this like cafe market restaurant area. You can see behind me there's like 
benches and places to look at the view. I think this is called the sunset point because it's a really nice place to watch sunset. We just got some more water. section. I thought that the rope section didn't exist because we hadn't encountered it yet. It looks a lot scarier than it is. Honestly, I was scared to do it, but it's not that bad. You just got to keep your footing steady. We are in the fourth and final quarter of our hike. We've done around 10, 11 K. We have two or three more to go. I'm going to put the name of this hike and the link to it and a bunch of information to it down in the bio. And we're going to finish this hike and go get a well-deserved meal. I'm so glad we decided to do that hike again because the views were insane. Overall, I feel like this was our best experience in Cappadocia and we hadn't even seen the balloons yet. So then that night after doing the hike, we decided, okay, tomorrow we're going to go back to where we ended our hike because there's some like sunrise viewing points and we're going to watch the balloons from there. So we decided to go to a motorcycle rental spot and ask if they had any bikes left and they had like one left, so it was perfect. The people in Garem were so, so nice. We like had never rented a motorbike before, so we were like, not sure how it worked, but anyway, they were just so kind and so accommodating and this goes for like everybody that we interacted with in Cappadocia. So we parked our little motorbike outside our hotel and then we went to bed and set our alarms for like 5 a.m. Around five to come see the balloons. Missed it on our first morning because we woke up a little bit too late. So definitely, if you come to see them, come between five and 5.30. So if you get up too late, you won't see any. So right now, we are pretty near where the balloons are released. So we have this like really cool ground view of them. The scooter costs around 35 euros a day. So that's the only expense of this, otherwise it's free. This is our last full day in Cappadocia and my boyfriend actually surprised me and said that he has something planned for our three year anniversary, which we don't even actually have a date for our anniversary. It's kind of vibes based. Like it was sometime in July. I don't know, it's weird, but yeah, every July we're kind of like, oh, it's been kind of another year. <laughs> like we should do something special. Um, anyway, so this was our something special that we did. Today we are going to the Turkish bath, except it's not really a traditional Turkish bath that we're going to. We booked a special package service, so pretty sure we're steaming for some of it and then getting a massage for the second part of it. Service is about an hour and it's 50 euros each. I'm gonna bring you with me and take you on this experience and tell you a little bit more about it as we go. As soon as we were done in the sauna, we just had to strip down and start the scrubbing part. So obviously I couldn't film that, but that was so crazy. <laughs> it was such a cool experience. So first they like um, rinse you down with really nice, like warm water and you're just lying down on the marble and they're throwing it on you. So it's a bit like, I kept giggling at the beginning because it was so, it was such a strange experience. And then they scrub you. Um, so they get off all the dead skin after your pores are like opened up in the sauna. And then they use these really cool like cloth things to put soap on you. And then they soap you down and they give you a little massage. And then afterwards they rinse you again. And they actually shampooed my hair, which I wasn't expecting. And then you get dried off and I have never felt cleaner in my life. <laughs> I 
once we got home, we had some dinner and then we packed up our bags because we were leaving to Istanbul the next day. But even though our flight was really early in the morning, we realized that we would still have time to watch the balloons one more time. And like, how could you not? So we set our alarms even earlier this time and we decided in the morning we would just walk up to the terrace, watch the balloons from there and then have the breakfast buffet. Good morning, you guys. It is 5 a.m. It's time to go see the balloons. We were on the second It's 5.20 right now. Yesterday we got up at around 5.30 and the balloons were still crazy. So we got up at 5.30 and then we motorcycled out. And so probably by the time we got there, it was maybe like 5.45. And the balloons were still insane, but not this crazy. This is actually so beautiful. So there are shorter group tours. Those are on the cheaper side and those would probably start at like 175 to 200 a person. But then there are also longer tours with less people in the basket those would be more expensive and those would start at around 250. I moved over to the cushiony area at the terrace. All those prices were in euros by the way. If you do decide to go up in the balloons you obviously have to get up a little bit earlier. What's nice is a lot of travel groups will organize your pickup and your drop-off so all you have to worry about is just being in your hotel lobby at around 4.30. Whatever you decide, it's absolutely breathtaking to see the balloons. Whether you're on the ground, on your hotel terrace or actually up there in the sky, it is actually a once-in-a-lifetime sight. Oh my god, look at this one behind me now. That's crazy. We're headed to Istanbul today for 10 days. If you like this video, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll put all the links to everything we did in the description box. And if you want to follow along for our travels, not just in Turkey, but for the rest of our trip through Europe, hit the subscribe button.